Hi, I have too many windows open. I keep getting all these uh, Google uh, scrolling messages. But anyways, as I go through the video, I'll close some of them and hopefully it'll go away. Okay, Lord, so just give me um, wisdom and fill me with your Holy Spirit, I pray, and um, help me reveal what you've shown me um, without making it too long and just getting to the point. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... I've been praying about um, natural disasters and stuff, especially, you know, Yellowstone and uh, California volcanoes and all the alerts and watches that they're having, and asking the Lord to reveal something to me about that. And every time I seem to pray about that, I, I always get um, dreams about um, imminent things coming, um, but not necessarily, not natural disasters so the Lord's been revealing to me um, for the last three or four nights 11 9 11 11 and 11 12 um, I've had multiple dreams probably four or five um, all different scenarios in my dreams but they all meant the same thing and so he's really revealing this to me and I so I felt the need to share anyways um, He's to me. He's revealing that we're right at the verge of the apocalypse. So we're very, very, very near um, to the four horsemen, the first four seals of Revelation, and um, very soon, so soon that he gave me um, an idiom, a couple idioms, and so I'll share those with you in a moment. But um, I just found this picture on Google and so the four horsemen of the apocalypse so um, I believe personally um, this is not what he's revealed to me and hasn't given me names of anyone in particular although I have my assumptions but um, it's my opinion that the Antichrist is alive and um, I believe he's in power already um, but not necessarily in the role of you know the conqueror as revelation as revelation um the first seal states so when that does occur when he is given that final authority um by the lord to um because god nothing happens without god allowing it when god does open that first seal and allow um that person to take his final position as the Antichrist, um, that will kick off the seven-year tribulation, I believe. Um, so with that said, we look at Revelation 6, the first seal. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud, with a voice like thunder, come and see, and I looked, and behold, a white horse, he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. So I have a few different videos on the six seals of Revelation, and um, it's my personal opinion, again, um, that we're raptured at the sixth seal, whenever that is in, in God's timing, okay? Um, so I believe we'll, Christians will also be here during the first six seals. And... Um, we might not know or see, we might not see the man, the antichrist and know for sure this is him but we may see him and just not know that this is he's going to fulfill this role um anyways the, i believe that this first seal happens when he actually is given authority by the lord to go ahead and take that position um when he establishes his, you know, reign as the as the conqueror. And the second seal, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse fiery red went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. And then the third seal, when he opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come and see, so I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in hand, 
And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a Daenerys, and three quarts of barley for a Daenerys, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Then the fourth seal, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. And Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Okay, and then we have the fifth seal, which is martyrs um, being killed by, for the testimony of the, the word of God. And then the sixth seal, which is obviously, um, it's cosmic disturbances, and there's a large quake that moves everything out of place, and the sky recedes as a scroll. And then, um, every, and then every man said, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So at this point, um, and then there's a silence in heaven for about a half an hour with the seventh seal before um, the 144,000. Um, and the 144,000 are sealed. And there's a number in heaven that no man can number before the trumpets take place. And I believe that's the raptured saints, the Christians. Anyways, we have these seals that will come upon the face of the whole earth. And... Um, it's, it's again, the, the, Lord, the Lord's not a respecter of persons. And he tells us in Romans um, 3, 3.10, that there's none righteous, no, not one. And these seals, um, where it says that take peace from the earth and um, people should kill one another. And then we have the um, <clears throat> scarcity of food. And then in the fourth seal we have, um, it says, given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, and death, and by the beasts of the earth. And then we have the martyrdom, which affects everyone as well. Um, some people, even like a couple friends of mine that I've, you know, I know on YouTube or such, they've said that this refers to just the U.S., but again, God's um, judgments, um, God's not a respecter of persons, and there's none that are righteous, no, not one, and we all deserve sin, and um, we all deserve death and um, punishment, although God, Christ died for us um, to set us free from that, and so we are made righteous in Romans 5. It says that we're made righteous by his, by his sacrifice, and only by him are we made righteous, so... Um, and, the, and like I did in my previous video, the, the rain and the sun shines and falls on the just and the unjust alike. So he's not a respecter of persons, and he's not going to just judge one nation. I believe he's, you know, he's going to judge the world. And destruction comes upon every man that's on the face of the earth during the tribulation time, um, the tribulation and the great tribulation, the first and second half. Um these things are going to affect everyone and not just one particular people in one part of the earth is going to be affected more than the other. Um, we already see martyrs being killed in um, other countries besides the U.S. Um, and these cosmic disturban disturbances, it says the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, that means everyone hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks. Okay, so this is, um, you know, the tribulation is going to judge the world, not just a particular person. And so when these things start to occur, they're going to be occurring, first of all, I believe, once it begins, well, obviously there's no turning back, and God's not going to stop um, the the things that are set in motion. Secondly, uh, they're going to affect everyone, not just a particular area or a particular person or race, or um, even though we're all the human race, it won't affect just one particular culture or land mass. Okay. Thirdly, 
you're going to know it. We are going to be well aware of what's going on. Um, the Lord says that he opens the eyes of um, those that are his, that these days, this, these things will not overtake us as a thief. So it says that when we see these things start to happen, um, look up because our redemption draws near. So that is our hope. And um, our hope is in him. And our hope is that, you know, we know that once these things are set in motion, we're going to be, we're going to be with him soon. And so that's our um, comfort. So um, we shouldn't think of ourselves too highly that it won't affect us or it won't be such a big deal. And we, and I really believe that these seals haven't opened yet because once it does, um, it's going to be evident. It's not going to be like you're going to have to look for the uh, the uh, um, the evidence that it's occurring. It's going to be quite clear, especially to those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. So, with that said. All the dreams that I've had in the last four or five days, or since the 11 9, had to do with these, um, with building up to the these things occurring. Um, I'll just tell you what I wrote down. Um, all of the dreams that I've had since 11 9 to 11 12 um, have to do with us run, having to run and hide. Um, uh, in, multiple, in many of my dreams, at least three of them, there were drones up in the skies that were keeping watch and spying and um, trying to, uh, yeah, keep tabs on everyone and everything that was going on. So drones war, um, there was war going on, conflict, and um, those in power were attempting to take control over all, all the people. And in all of these very different dreams, God kept me and those with me, the people that were on his side, um, that weren't going to give in to the demands of the powers that, you know, that were trying to do all these things. They kept, he, um, he kept us safe and protected. Even when those around us fell by the sword, by death, by illness or hunger, those things never occurred to those that were walking with Jesus. The seals will affect those upon the whole earth. No one is exempt from these things to come. They come upon the whole earth. There is um, none righteous, I wrote, no, no not one, Romans 3.10, although again he has shown me that he will uphold the righteous. What makes us righteous? You can read that in Romans 5. I think I have it. I didn't go to just skip a couple chapters here. The tab probably got closed because I have too many tabs open. <laughs> um, all right, Romans 5. So it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though we, Though him... Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Um, and then down here it says... Um, now the law came in, came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned, as sin reigned in death, grace also reigned. Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says here in verse 17, for if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man. Much more will, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of Righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And it says, uh, Therefore as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness led to the justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, Adam, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous, Jesus. Okay, so we have, we're made righteous 
through what he did for us and believing on that. And that's our hope. Okay, um, right here, the Lord gave me last night um, down the barrel. And he also said, um, barreling, you know, down the barrel, barreling down. Okay, so I looked up the idiom, I looked up um, down the barrel. And it says, it refers to staring down the barrel of a gun. But when you're staring down the barrel of something, this idiom is stating, when you are staring down the barrel of something, as the Lord told me, um, down the barrel, you are faced with an imminent danger, one which happens soon. Okay, so I felt that, that the Lord was giving me a warning that these things are going to occur soon. That the five dreams that I've had in the last three days. And so um, I also typed in barreling down. And to barrel down, like he said, down the barrel, barrel down. To move very quickly in a deliberate or determined way. So I feel that the Lord was telling me that with these dreams and with these idioms, that these things are about these things are upon us they're very soon we're looking at them happening very soon in the future right in the near future okay um let me see i have too many links here so my job like he gave me before the dream where he told me amos 3 7 he said surely the lord god does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants the prophets so I believe he's giving me the warning to share with everyone that um, these things are upon us at the very door. They're very close to happening and that we need to keep our focus on him like my previous videos that I've done in the last couple of weeks have said. Um, so it says the Bible warns, this person's article says, the Bible warns the darkest days of Earth's history are yet future. The events will be awesome and will strike suddenly. The events will be terrible and an unbelieving world will be taken by surprise. The devastation will be complete. The devastation will be global. The Bible is clear in its warnings. Please remember, while God promises hope and an escape to the believer, there will be no hope for those who reject him. There will be no escape from the devastation. Fury will be unleashed upon the world. The fury will be relentless. The fury will be decisive. Prophecies are placed in the Bible for a reason. Let us not be accountable, held accountable for ignoring them. Warning signs are given to help us draw near to him for protection before the coming ap apocalypse and Armageddon. And that's what I feel he's giving me to share with you. Um, we're, you know, he's, they're warning signs to help us draw near to him because like the dream he gave me of the wave, if we're resting in him and we're walking with him and he and we're looking to him for everything he will be our protection okay and he will he will keep us safe through those things in first thessalonians 5 4 6 and 9 but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day the rapture and the coming apocalypse should overtake you as a thief you are all sons of light and sons of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, the warning signs. He told he God said that he would gather, regather Israel back in the land, and he did this. Okay, already in 1948. And then um, he also. I wanted to show you something down here. I'll leave a link to this because it's it's very interesting. Um, oh, then I've talked about this too, the, the characteristics of the gen generation that will lead into the unspeakable terrors of the apocalypse. Okay, um, and then he gives us, um, hold on. I've talked about these things before. Days of Noah, I have a video on that. Okay, um, there's something down here. The birth pains before the apocalypse. I believe we're already in those. And I've done Matthew 24. I've already talked about those in the videos before. 
Okay, then there's going to be coming Middle East peace plans, which they're already discussing. And they're trying, um, they actually, I have a video. Um, let me see if I can find it. They are wanting to have a, um, U.S. wants peace by end of 2014. So they want, they're already negotiating and trying to get those peace talks in motion here. Uh, let me go back to where I was. You have to make sure that you're not lukewarm. I've done videos warning about that. Um, if we're not part of the Church of Philadelphia, our personal walk with the Lord, at the time of the rapture, then it is possible that you would be left here. Um, if you're one of the uh, part, if you're, if your walk with the Lord is as one of the other six churches of Revelation. So we need to make our calling and election sure as far as our heart with the Lord and making sure that um, we are humble and serving him. We're humble before him and serving him with our whole mind, body, and soul. Um, and then, uh, anyways, um, this, I'll leave a link to this page, the rapturewatch.net. Anyways, the watchman's duty, Ezekiel 33, 6, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, back, so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that person is taken away in his sin or iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So I'm just setting out the warning to be ready with your heart, mind, and soul. Make sure that you're living for the Lord and not for yourself. Um, we need to make him cent center of our lives. Um, and then one of the final warnings he gave us to look at the, se the times and the seasons. Signs of the times are not. Um, many are divided on the blood moons, tetrads, and whether they have prophetic meanings. So um, the purpose of this page is to arm the reader with some historical information about previous tetrads. Okay, so it says in um, before that great and awesome day of the Lord, the sun will be darkened and the moon will be turned to blood. It could refer to this March solar full solar eclipse and the last of the tetrads, the blood moons. Um, it could also be because the sky is full of ash from, you know, an explosion or a meteor or such. Um, but it says, it says, here, let me see right here. Um, every time these four blood moon tetrads have occurred, something historical has happened with the nation of Israel. And um, this, these all four land on Passover and Sukkot both years in a row. So they're all on Jewish high holy days. Um, and we know that in September 15, 2015, before this last one, um, quite possibly, I bet that, you know, it could be the Shemitah, it's the end of the Shemitah year, so it could be that the global, the third seal happens at that time. Okay, but, um, it talks about Tishri, okay. And then, um, so keep that in mind. But again, he showed me those idioms and the dreams. And then to move very quickly in a deliberate or determined way, barreling down. Okay. So we're spiraling towards those end times. Um, and this guy, um, Yoder's Old Testament narration. Uh, this is part of a book, page 40. Um, but I thought this was interesting. When I did a search, it, it brought me to this book that he wrote. But Yoder points out that God's response to human disorder is not one of angry punishment as routinely assumed, but of gracious redirection. Each step of the way, God is reversing and breaking and turning a human race that is barreling out of control. This race is not quite a people because it lacks the capacity to recognize authentic peoplehood god would have had to reveal that to them it is this con it is in this context that god calls abraham he eases off the 
breaks and steers his creation in a fundamentally new direction. This new direction does not entail tightening the divine grip on humanity, but appointing agents of judgment and control throughout the earth. Humans already have structures that function this way, though such structures are sufficient for the task of limiting chaos and maintaining a basic sense of order. They are powerless to produce the holistic shalom that God intends. God has a different solution for bringing global harmony and peace. God's solution is his chosen people. And we know that that peace won't come until the tribulation is over. So um, that's back at that other page. So I would encourage you to read about the six seals and to pray and um, seek for his protection. He's given us Psalm 91 and Psalm 90, um, 121. Both he's given to me um, a few different times and others as well. But it says right here that, um, you know, safety of abiding in the presence of God. If we're in him, um, he's going to be our refuge and fortress and he'll deliver us. And um, even though things may happen around us, verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and look, see and see the reward of the wicked. Okay, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge. Um, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. Okay, and then in Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So our peace is through him. And he is, we're made righteous through him. So I would encourage you to make sure that you are making Jesus the Lord and center of your life. Um, so this day will not overcome you as a thief and so that you will have his protection and um, that he will uphold you and he will you will have that hope that when the rapture does occur that you will be with him and not left here to suffer his full wrath um, that will come upon the face of the whole earth and I, I just believe that these days are very soon um, the seals are gonna be happening faster than we believe they will and that um, but with him he will keep us in, um, safe through those through those beginning days and um, if we do not stumble or fall we will be with him shortly God bless